Raise your hand if you have bought new clothes in the past month. Now, raise your hand if you support child labour. How about sweatshop labour and human trafficking? See, that's what I thought, but how many of you are certain that the shoes you are wearing tonight were not stitched by a teenage girl in Bangladesh working for less than $2 a day? Can you speak with confidence that your new clothes were made by well-paid workers with safe working conditions and humane working hours? Our unlimited choice of cheap clothing has only been made possible by a fad called fast fashion. Fast fashion is defined as inexpensive clothing produced rapidly by mass market retailers in response to the latest trends. And by mass market retailers, I mean those capitalist and unethical businesses that cannot see beyond the dollar. I have to admit that before I started to educate myself on this topic, I was obliviously shopping for new clothing to my heart's content. I now accept that I was unknowingly exploiting victims of child and sweatshop labour with my every purchase. And trust me, so are all of you. It took me a confronting trip to the landfill site at Rochdale, many overwhelming geography lessons and some soul searching to realise that my own ignorance had very real detrimental consequences. I no longer see it as anyone else's problem. So who is driving this mad fashion craze that leads to exploitation of garment workers? While we can't always transfer our responsibility to others, social media has escalated and magnified fast fashion over the years by brainwashing us into insecurity of our current wardrobes. With new fashion trends emerging every week, our clothing can never be trendy enough. Every day we are bombarded with advertisements that fuel our addiction to consumption and our constant need for external validation really doesn't help either. For maximum bang for their buck, big businesses outsource their clothing production to, com to countries such as Bangladesh and Cambodia, which pay low wages and have almost non-existent compliance to safety laws or any protection for their workers. Companies such as Zara, H&M, Forever 21 make their clothing in factories with poor working conditions, little safety, unfair wages, unreasonable working hours and child labour. Such factories are colloquially known as sweatshops. Working conditions in these sweatshops are worse than a prison camp. Wages are minuscule by any standard and there is blatant disregard for safety. Researchers from the Overseas Development Institute surveyed nearly 3,000 households in the slums of Dhaka, Bangladesh. They found children as young as six years old sacrificing their educations to work full time. Some children were working up to 110 hours a week, nearly 16 hours a day, for less than $2. The single pair of shorts you buy at Zara are likely more expensive than these workers' entire monthly earnings. Another example of forced child labour is found in Uzbekistan, where schools are shut down for two months during the academic term every year, and millions of students are sent to harvest cotton. And don't even get me started on the blatant disregard for safety and the poor working conditions. No air conditioning, little ventilation, inadequate lighting, no fire exits and no escape doors. No wonder in May 2013, more than a thousand helpless lives were lost when the Rana Plaza, a garment factory in Dhaka, collapsed. Despite the large cracks in the building and the workers' protests, no safety precautions were taken and the eight-story building fell to pieces. When everything is focused on profit, basic human rights are ignored. A fundamental right of every working person is to come home after a workday alive and healthy. But in this case, workers are considered a commodity and their voices are left unheard. The COVID-19 pandemic has taken the lack of safety in sweatshops to a different level. The 2020 word of the year, social distancing, is a concept that is beyond alien in these places. The lack of space makes sweatshops like petri dishes for this virus. The virus divides and breeds and once a worker is infected, it's not as if there's a robust health system waiting to heal them, but instead they are stigmatized and let go of work with no further path to earning. So is there anything positive about fast fashion? With great power comes great responsibility, a quote originally from the Spider-Man movie, is particularly relevant here. When we have the power to choose what we wear, we have the responsibility to choose wisely. 
As consumers, the future of fast fashion is in our hands. You are in charge and you can be the voice of the millions of workers that are being exploited as we speak. So I have designed a fast fashion diet and I challenge you all tonight to break up with fast fashion. It is simply a toxic relationship. But like any diet, it will be challenging. You may crave that instant fix from a $5 shirt, but trust me, over time, you will only feel more and more rewarded. So firstly, educate yourself about where your clothing is made. Scrutinize the system. I'm sure you already ask a few questions before you make a purchase, like, do they have this in my size? Could I buy a similar article of clothing from elsewhere for a lower price? And I urge you to consider just one more thing. Who made my clothes and where are they from? By educating yourself about your favorite brands, you will quickly realize how unethical your clothing choices may have been. Also, research advocacy organizations and companies which aim to eradicate child and sweatshop labor. Ending sweatshop labor isn't simple. After all, the little money the workers do make brings food on their tables. But some companies have made enormous inroads, educating workers of their rights, improving working conditions and pay. Such companies are worth supporting because over the past 10 years, we have seen an increase in companies with ethical principles and practices. Secondly, reduce your clothing consumption entirely. The age-old concept of reduce, reuse, recycle works pretty well here as well. Before you buy an article of clothing, think to yourself critically. Will I wear this a minimum of 30 times? Clothing should not be disposable. The $5 shirt may give you short-term happiness, but somewhere on the other side of the world, millions of workers are suffering from our unethical habits. Feed the inner being inside of you, who gets strength from who you are and not how trendy your clothing is. And finally, donate to and shop from op shops so that your clothing can be reused and recycled. Also, going thrift shopping and going to suitcase rummages is often a fun way to find cool and ethical pieces for discounted prices. I urge you not to succumb to the temptations of fast fashion. Educate yourself about where your clothing is made and adjust accordingly. Support advocacy organizations, reduce your clothing consumption entirely, and donate to and shop from op shops. By doing this, you will be slowing our fast-paced textile industry and supporting garment workers all around the world. Fast fashion makes us feel so rich, but makes our world so desperately poor. Thank you.